And before we cover the solution, let me just quickly mention that in the readme, you'll find info on default values, and also the optional chaining. So both features will implement in this video. And if you want to find out more info, if you're not familiar with them, you can always utilize the readme. So back in the person, let's start with the nickname, that's going to be a little bit easier. So let me just comment out the image, just so we don't have that massive error. And notice over here, we still have it because of course, I am also accessing the image over here. So I'll have to do it in two places. Let's comment this one out. And for now, let me just remove those messages. And as far as the nickname, what is the issue? Well, again, not all of them have that property. What's the solution? Well, one of the solutions is obviously to use the or operator, just like we covered in conditional rendering, correct? So I can go here and say shake and bake. And what do you know? Now all of them have at least some kind of value. Okay, that's good. But we can also utilize the fact that when it comes to functions in JavaScript, we can provide right away a default value. So if you're setting up a function, and you're passing in the parameter, you can also provide a default value just in case it's not provided. So in here, I know that I'm going to be looking for the nickname. However, if it doesn't exist, what can we do? Well, we can set it equal to shake and bake. And what do you know? Now the result is going to be exactly the same. Again, this is just straight up JavaScript, something that you can utilize as you're setting up your React components. Now the second one is sort of the same. The problem again, we're having in here, if we comment out, we have that annoying error, which essentially says, Hey, you cannot access the properties from nothing. Why? Well, because if we go back again, only the third item has the images. So if I'm trying to do this for Bob, Peter, and all that, it's not going to work. So what we can do? Well, we can do it the long way. So bear with me, I'll show you basically what we were doing before the optional chaining. And then I'll show you effectively why optional chaining is so cool. And the way it worked before, we simply needed to repeat bunch of and operators. So in here, I'm going to go with image. And I don't think I'm going to leave this one for your reference. I don't think there's any need. So first I go with images. And I'll say, listen, if the images exist, then look for the first one. So essentially, I'm using the and one. Now, if there is a first one, then I'll look for small. So essentially, one by one, you just keep repeating them. So what I'm saying here is if images exist, get me the first one. Now, if the first one exists, then get me the small property. So in here, I just want to take this, copy and paste. And yep, I want to say, hey, if it's there, then grab me the small one. And you can probably already guess that yes, in order to get the URL, what do we need to do? We need to copy and paste. And then we need to just chain essentially here this URL, like so. So we grab it here and notice how we nicely don't have the error. So essentially, if I refresh, I'll see no errors in the console. And also, the one that has the image is going to have that in the JSX as well. So once we save, notice I have person displayed. Now, rest of them don't have it. So that's something that we need to work on. But at least the one that has the image, well, I'm nicely rendering that in the JSX. And essentially, let's first worry about how we can shorten this code. And then we'll worry about how we can display at least something in the browser. So first, yes, this is awesome. But I mean, it would be nicer if we could just get it done in less lines of code, essentially less characters. And the way we can do that is by using optional chaining in JavaScript. So in here we go with const, 
and then again IMG. And if you're wondering, this code is going to be again located in the README, so you can always reference it. So we want to go here with images, and then we just go with question mark. And if the property exists, basically if it's not null, then everything is good. If not, then we'll right away just get undefined. This is also awesome where we don't have that annoying, hey, you cannot get properties out of null. So essentially what I'm saying here, if images exist, awesome, get me the first one. If that exists, then get me small. If that exists, then actually get me the URL. Now, this is great, but it doesn't solve the issue where at the moment, notice only one of them has the image. And it's probably a nicer setup if you have at least some kind of default image, correct? And in order to do that, we'll actually need to look at the assets. And you'll see that I provided some SVG. And yes, basically, this is something that you'll need to set up manually yourself. Whether that is in the Cloudinary, whether that is locally, you'll need somewhere a default image. So in my case, that's the default avatar in the assets. So now let's navigate back to the person and we want to import that. Now, please keep in mind that we're sitting in a source. So we need to import, we need to name the variable, and then we need to provide the path. So in this case, I'm going to go with this one. I'll call this avatar and then from, and now let's go one level up, then two levels up, three levels up. We're looking in the assets and we want to go with default and then avatar and then SVG. And now we can utilize the or operator where I can say, hey, listen, check for images, check for the first one, check for small and uh, URL. And if it's there, awesome, return this one. If not, well, just set it equal to my default avatar. And what do you know? Now we have a list and if the item doesn't have the image, at least we display something. Now, quite often, as you're looking at the optional chaining code, you'll see this approach as well, where essentially, let me comment this one out. And you'll see this one. And effectively, this operator, let me go back to readme, I left it here for your reference. So it's this one. That's the operator you're looking for. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail what's the difference. They're extremely similar. Uh, if you're interested, then please utilize the search engine. Again, instead of the or, you'll see these two question marks. And that's this operator. And if you want to find out more info, just please go to your favorite search engine. And pretty much we're done with the challenge. As you can see, we can utilize straight up JavaScript to essentially fix the potential bugs that we might encounter once we start working with APIs. And I know that some of you think this is totally weird example. There's no way there would be such structure and then there's no way that properties would be missing. I mean, he's totally making this up. And again, I don't want to be a bearer of bad news. And I'm not saying that every API is going to have the issues, but once you start working with external APIs, just be prepared that structure might not be what you expect. It's going to be pretty nested. I can tell you that right from the get-go. And also here and there, properties are going to be missing. So if you ever see in a console JavaScript complaining that it cannot access a certain property, right away think ding, 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 ding. There's a property missing. So even though I'm expecting something back from the API and I'm trying to render it here, well, it's not coming through. And as far as suggestions, my always suggestion is to limit the amount of items you're rendering. So if I hit this bug, yes, one by one, effectively I comment out the stuff and then I go back and check which value is missing. So normally I would log the person back here in the list and then I would go over where potentially that property might be missing. Just to showcase that if we go here with log and person, we'll right away see that only some of them have those values. Now, of course, this is somewhat simple example where I right away can see that, but normally 
this is the place where at least I can start working on the problem because this is going to give me at least the idea of what data I'm getting back.